Now let's consider the computational problem at hand. Given a system of three planes, can we determine their unique intersection point? As we can see doing just a few steps, the algebra is going to be a nightmare if we try to symbolically solve for the solution. Also, it's not clear how to generalize any formulas we end up with to systems in higher dimensions, which we'd eventually like to be able to solve. Instead, is there some sort of algorithm we can follow that will always find the solution to a linear system? In fact, there is. The algorithm we will follow is based on three operations that will apply to the equations in the system. However, before we start trying to manipulate equations, let's think about what sort of manipulations would be valid. Primarily, we don't want to do anything that would change the geometry of the planes represented by the equations, and therefore change the solution set. Also, we should be able to reverse the operations we perform in order to obtain the original pair of equations. First of all, it's certainly legal at any time to swap the order of two equations in the system. Since intersections of planes don't depend on the order in which we list them, this is perfectly fine. We don't change our solution set at all. Also, we can easily undo this operation just by swapping the two equations back to their original order. What's another type of operation we could do? Well, if we have an equation and we multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, then the equation will stay true. However, if we were to multiply through by zero, then the operation would not be reversible. We would not be able to divide through by zero to obtain the original equation. So we need to add a caveat. We can multiply an equation by any non-zero number. Now does this operation preserve the solution? Yes. Multiplying through by a non-zero scalar just multiplies the normal vector, whose coordinates are these coefficients, by a scalar. So it will be pointing in the same direction. Moreover, you can algebraically verify that any point you select on the original plane satisfies the new equation, and vice versa. So the two planes consist of the same sets of points, i.e. they're the same. Also, since we specify that alpha must be a non-zero number, the operation is reversible, simply by multiplying through by one over alpha. Third, if we have two equations, we can add one equation to the other. Does this operation preserve the solution set? Well, suppose we had a point x, y, z that was in the intersection of two planes. In other words, the point x, y, z satisfies both of these equations. Now suppose we added the first equation to the second equation. This equation we know to be true because it was assumed true in the previous system. In the new second equation, this quantity is equal to k1 because of the first equation, and this quantity is equal to k2 because of the second equation from the old system. Therefore, this new system is true as well. x, y, z satisfies both of these equations. Therefore, x, y, z is in the first plane and in the new second plane, which means that the point x, y, z is in the new intersection of the two planes. Since this is true for any point x, y, z in the old intersection, it means that all of the points in the old intersection are contained in the new intersection. Also, because we can easily reverse this operation by subtracting the first equation from the second in the new system, this means that the new intersection does not contain any points that weren't in the old intersection. So the intersections are the same, so the solution set is preserved. Now suppose I modified the operation so that instead of adding just one times the first equation to the second, I add an arbitrary amount, alpha times the first equation, to the second equation. Notice that the same logic I applied earlier also holds in this case. So instead of just adding some equation to another equation, I can add a multiple of one equation to another. As I stated earlier, it's easy to reverse this operation as well. We just need to add negative alpha times the first equation to the second equation to get back to the original system.